Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about light in Dragnikan and their basic functionality, where to access them, what kind of lights we have and how to use them. So you come here to the scene workspace. We're going to start here and opening the special panel, going to lights. You see four types of lights in the post process. We will talk about this later. But here we have the basic slide in Replicon. So let's start with the most common one, which is the spotlight. You just drag and drop it and it will create a spotlight. And once you have it selected in the same list in the detail panel, you will see a list of um, parameters organized based on the functionality, you have the most useful parameters or the ones that you're going to control the most uh, over here in the basics. Uh, you can uh, use the look at function that we will take a look in a moment and then you have more advanced parameters. So let's start with them. Um, you can always change the position, rotation, and in this case the scale doesn't matter. Uh, it won't affect the light. You can attach the light as any other asset to a different asset. Um, you have MISC. In MISC, you can enable the visualization gizmo, which gives you a look and preview of the area of effect of the light. So this is very handy to know what's affecting the light. You have the light channels. This is uh, very interesting uh, and a very handy tool to control the lights. Now you can see uh, this spotlight is affecting uh, the avatar. So if you enable, for example, or disable channel zero and enable channel one, you see it's no longer affecting the avatar. What you can do is selecting the avatar and all assets has also lighting channels. So if you match, the lighting channels. Now only this light is affecting the avatar since the rest of the lights have the channel set to zero. So this is a very handy way to make sure you only lit whatever you want. So let's put this back to, uh, well, let's leave it like this. So we have a more clear view of what this light is doing. Um, now we have the pilot. This is one of the most useful tools for controlling the light position that allow to take control over the light and pilot it like it, it was the camera viewport, like in any video game, you can pilot it with uh, WASD and the right click mouse. So you can place it very easily on the scene and then click update. And now we have a more kind of Rembrandt light. Let's move to here. Perfect. Mm, okay. But then let's go to the basic parameters. Intensity is self-explanatory. Uh, you can basically change the intensity of the light. The color, there are two ways to control the color. Uh, one is for basically selecting any color you want. And the other one is using temperature. If you're familiar with how temperature work in lighting, the lower the value, the more warm. It's still a white light, but a warmer light, like a candle, for example. And then if you increase the value, it will be a cool light. Okay, let's leave it a bit warmer. Then you have the distance. Uh, let's move backwards. We have here our, icon, our spotlight. Let's show the visualization to see what we're doing. And the distance basically is how far the light reaches. So this is also very handy to control uh, the area affected by the light. Then we have fog intensity. This is basically how the light interacts with the fog without having to increase the intensity of the light. So for example, let's... Uh, hide this again, I can increase the fog intensity and you will see we have a very nice volumetric uh, light. Let's leave it like this. Perfect. Now 
we have a spot size and a spot sharpness. Let's uh, enable this again. A spot size basically is the size of the spot, the area affected by the light. And the sharpness is the fall off of from the center to the edge of the spot. So you would see that in a moment. If we increase this, let's place the light so it's more visible. Uh, oh, maybe we need to also enable the light in the tendency zero so it's also affecting the ground. And now we're gonna have a better view of the sharpness of the spotlight. So here you can control basically the fall off of the spot, which is also handy to reproduce some mm, lights in the scene. Then we have the light size. This basically increases the size of the source of the light. So if I increase it, you would see this yellow ball making it bigger. What it does, if you're familiar with lighting, the bigger the source light, the softer the saddle is. So if I did use this, watch my saddles are very sharp. You can see perfectly the saddle of the glasses, etc. As I increase the light size, everything became softer and softer. And now I have a very soft light, which it's a very great tool and to control the mood of the scene. Then you have the light length. It basically does the same, but uh, stretching the light. Mm, let's see the visualization again. If I increase this, you see it will stretch the light. And you have subsource radius. Basically, this is what you see in a reflective uh, uh, Mabidian. Uh, I don't know if we can catch it in the glasses. It's going to be a bit tricky. Um, but yes, so basically if you are seeing the, the light reflected, I don't know, in a screen or a window, you can increase this value and it will be softer, the reflection. So you can control that a little bit without affecting how it looks. What else we have? We have the look at, which is, uh, also very handy i can enable the look at and then just select this character and i can move the character and the spotlight will follows or i can select the spotlight let me mm, hide this and i can move the spotlight around the scene and it will always uh, point to the character then you have the offsets which allow you to uh, basically offset a little bit or a lot the look at so let's say you only want to point the spotlight to the fit so you can offset on the c-axis and it's still looking at the character but offset um, whatever value you put here and also you have the speed the follower speed which basically affects how fast the light will track the character. Let's disable everything. Okay, great. What else we have? We have some more advanced parameters to can affect how the indirect lighting is, basically how much the light bounce. If I increase this value a lot, you will see like the light bouncing off the ground is uh, very strong. In this case, it's not very realistic since it's the stronger that the direct light in, but you can control that. You can change the unit system if you know what you're doing. Uh, you can control the fall off of the light. Uh, this is used in uh, inverse square fall off, which is a more realistic fall off, how the light lose energy. Uh, at a given distance, uh, you can remove this and then enter a value for a specific fall off. So basically, uh, if you set the fall off to one, the light will be always the same intensity to the end of the distance you put here. So 
yeah, that's also very handy for more controllable lights or for more realistic lights in this case. Then you have ray trace options. Uh, for, by default, they use whatever it's in the post process. So you have ray trace enabled in the post process. Um, the light will be using uh, ray trace. You can always disable it or enable it always, no matter what the post process says. And you have the shadow quality. So for example, let's move it here. Um, if I make the light dear a lot, you will see some noise in the saddle when it's softer. You can increase the saddle quality and it will reduce the noise to a certain point. Also, you don't want to increase this a lot for every single light as it has a performance uh, effect on your, on your sin. And then there is a bunch of extra parameters that if you're familiar of how uh, Cascade Shadows work and with uh, Unreal systems, uh, you will find them more familiar. But if you're using ray trace or in general, you should not be worried about them. If you're not using them, uh, they have very useful parameters. So very useful values, like you don't need to tweak them uh, by default. So that's the basics of lights. Uh, let's give a quick tour of the rest of the lights. We have the spotlight here, uh, the effect light, sorry. Uh, let's move it to the other side. And because our character is in the channel one. Okay. So the red light basically is what does what the name imply. It's a square and you can control uh, Oh, this is the burn angle through it, the height and the width. So it will make the light softer of now. The bigger this is. Um, also, you can control the barn, which is this um, blocker here. And you can control the angle. Uh, let's go here. So basically, let's make this a smaller, a stronger. you will see that it's not spelling the light on the sides if the barn is at 90 degrees or I can increase the length. So it's like a blocker all the way around. And if I open the barn, you will see how it let the light uh, go through. It's basically a way to control the, the area affected by the red light. Let's uh, hide this and now let's use a point light. <laughs> Basically, point lights uh, are lights that uh, light the same in all directions. And you have similar parameters. You can control the size to make the shadow softer, uh, the length to make the, to stretch the, the light. Uh, you can control the fog the distance, uh, color, temperature. Uh, in this case, you cannot uh, set this light to look at because it aims at all directions. So uh, it doesn't make sense. And the last light is uh, the directional light. Mm. Let's hide the dome because the directional light Yeah, you have to enable. And um, let's place a floor. Make it bigger. Okay, this is very intense. We, we have been always filtered by light, so it's easier to find light. Uh, let's hide all of those and reduce the intensity of the directional light. The directional light basically, let's hide the spotlight, acts like a um, sunlight, meaning the direction of light is a uh, light infinitely far away. So you can have the gizmo here and you will see the arrow point in the direction of the light. And if you rotate them, it will rotate the angle of the light up and down. So it doesn't matter where you place it. It's not uh, affecting the 
the light, only the rotation, because it's a light that acts like a sun. So if you want to light an interior, for example, with light coming from the window and the sky system that we have, it's not enough. You can add a directional light to do it. Uh, so you don't have to put spotlights or red lights in every single window. And yeah, you have uh, basically the same controls. This is still needs a bit organization, but it's going to be uh, fixed in the future. So yes, those are the basic lights in Replicon and how to control them. Uh, in the next video, we will take a look at the light workspace, which works with the same lights, but in a different way, because we use a preset system that you can load and modify as we is, but we will take a look at that in the future.